Good morning, grade fives. Today we're going to look at prefixes and suffixes. So we're going to start by looking at what prefixes, suffixes, and base words or root words are. We're then going to look at a few common prefixes before we look at a few common suffixes. We'll end off by doing an online activity and a worksheet. So, for this lesson, you need to know three concepts, prefix, root word, and suffix. So a prefix is a half word, for example, anti, ex, post, pre, that is added to the front of a word to modify or change its meaning. It comes before a root word, which if we're talking about a root word, it is a word root that forms the base part of a word. So the base part of a word is your root word when it's got no prefixes or suffixes added to the word. Lastly, we have what is called a suffix, which is a letter or a group of letters added to the end of a word to alter its meaning or to ensure it fits grammatically into a sentence. So even just adding an S when you're changing from a singular to a plural is an example of a suffix. Now, a word can have both a prefix and a suffix, but we're not going to focus on that just yet. So, prefixes. Prefixes, a prefix, and as you can see, pre, before, pre is actually a prefix itself, is added to the front of a root word to make a new word. And at the top on your screen, you can see four common prefixes. Pre meaning before, un, not, miss, wrong, or bad, re, again, so reread. A prefix is added before a root word to make a new word. Remember, prefixes become before the root word, not after, before. Prefixes, before. So there are six common prefixes that I want us to look at today. Try, meaning three. For example, triangle, a triangle has three angles. You should know this from maths. A tricycle, now think of a bicycle, bi means two, two wheels. A tricycle has how many wheels then? Three. And lastly, a triceratops, which has three. What does it have three of? Who can tell me? Hmm. Write that down on your paper and let's see how many of you get it. Our next one is dis. Dis means not. So for example, disagree. I do not agree. Disappear. I do not appear. I'm not in front of you anymore. Dis, not. Pre, we've discussed this when we looked at the word prefix, means before. And the easiest way to remember that is to look at the word preschool. If you go to preschool, you go to it before you go to school. So whenever you see the word pre, think of it as before. Proceed, predict. Then we have another word that means before, and that is for. Forecast, foresee, forward. You'll usually know which one is the correct one because it will form a word that you will have heard of before. You're not going to get a foreseed or foredict. You're not going to get a pre see or pre word. Okay? So it's about knowing the words and what sounds right. But at your level, the words that you're going to come across that use for or pre are all going to be common words. Our next prefix that we're going to look at is miss, and that means wrongly. Misunderstood, misfire, misconduct. So if we're saying that miss is wrongly, if we look at the first word, misunderstand means you wrongly or incorrectly understood. And in, which means not. So incorrect, not correct. Inaccurate, not accurate. Incomplete, not complete. And these are all just a few words I've given you for each of these common prefixes. Now there are a lot more prefixes and there are a lot more examples of each of these prefixes. Can you think of any now that could fit in with any of these six prefixes? And can you think of any 
prefixes that I haven't included that are quite common. We're now going to move on to suffixes. A suffix is added to the end of a root word to make a new word. For example, less, which is without, and full, full of. Grateful, wonderful. These are both common suffixes, but we have some more. So I want us to look at these six common suffixes. And we're going to start with full because we've already discussed it. And that means full or full of. So careful means full of care. You will do it with care. Wonderful, full of wonder. The next one we're going to look at is less, which means without. Brainless, without brains. Endless, without an end. Meaningless, without meaning. Next is Li, so related to quality, it's often added to adjectives to form adverbs. The softball, if we're looking at the word soft as an adjective, if we then go and add ly, the suffix ly to soft, we get softly and that forms an adverb. We also have slowly and kindly. Then. Our next suffix is ness, the state or quality of, fondness, eagerness, kindness. The next one we're going to look at is mint, the action or result of, and here I've got two examples, enjoy mint and movement. And lastly, able or able, can be done. They both mean the same thing, possible, Comfortable, legible. So passable can be passed. Legible can be read. That's what legible means. It means that something can be read. So when you add a suffix, if you know what that suffix means and you know what the root word means, you are often able to find out or to guess or predict what the meaning of that word is going to be. So for all of these examples and for the prefixes, you would have seen this little guy here. And that's what we call a hyphen. And we put that before a suffix or after, after a prefix because that's where the word would go. So I also want us to look at just some of these. So let's start with brainless. Brainless, our suffix is less. So our root word or base word is brain. To head over to the website Go click on that YouTube link and listen to the song about prefixes and suffixes. Right, now that we've done that, I need you to complete today's online activity, which can be found on Fun English Games. In this activity, you're going to choose the correct prefix that comes before the base word. And when you're finished with that, with each of the answers, as you go question by question, please read the explanation as to why you are wrong or right, as it will help you in the next activity. The last thing you're going to do today is to complete today's written activity. Now that you have had some guided practice in the online activity, you need to complete today's worksheet. Right, if you have any questions, please feel free to send me a message on Class Dojo or when we will return to school, have a little notepad with them. Alternatively, you are always welcome to send an email to dunveganprimarygrade5 at gmail.com and put your subject as English. Special thank you to the Slides Carnival website where I got the presentation template for today's lesson and some of the photographs come from Unsplash.